I need to talk about one thing before I talk about com combating magic, and that is possession, the issue of possession. Now, is every case of magic involving possession? No. Of course, possession is real, and there are evidences in the Quran and in the Sunnah. This is something that is cannot be denied, that the jinn sometimes do overtake the body. And the person sometimes loses consciousness himself, and the person becomes the jinn. And sometimes the person loses control, but not consciousness. There are many levels of possession. Does every sihr involve possession? No. Possession only occurs in the worst type of sihr. Much sihr occurs without any possession. Let's call it jinn irritation. So the jinn will simply be assigned to you to make your business fail. To give you no child basically. Always you have the miscarriage as we said, right? So it's not living inside of the body. There are many cases of sihr that don't involve possession. The jinn will rather just be around in your vicinity. Maybe even come back and forth into your life every few weeks to monitor the situation, right? And this is the most difficult type of sihr to battle and the least effective in your life, meaning harming your life. Because the less the jinn is in your life, the less you'll feel the sihr. So it is even possible you will read Quran for an hour, nothing will happen because the jinn is not there. That's why I said you need to make a habit of reading Quran. You need to make a habit so that once the jinn is there, it will react because it has to react at the Quran. It has to react at the Quran. And the worst type of sihr is when the jinn is inside of you living. Uh, whether it's the stomach, whether it's the brain, whether it's the back, and wherever it inhabits, there will be extra pain or tingling, spiny sensation or pins and needles at that space or heat, you know, hot and cold and for no reason. And again, you go to the doctors like everything seems fine here. You have rashes in one place. I don't know. Everything seems fine here. You know, you have stomach aches and you don't understand why the doctor saying everything's fine. So wherever the jinn is living will have some impact on you physically. So that type of uh, jinn inhabitation is easier to detect, but it's not easy to kick the jinn out. How do we combat it? Remember that you are reaching out to another world, and that is the world of the jinn. And you do not have the physical strength to combat the jinn. You only have one power, and that is la hawla la quwwata illa billah. Allah has the power over the jinn, and so. The number one way to combat sihr is through the Quran. And especially the surahs that the Prophet told us are extra special. Fatiha, Ayatul Kursi, the last verses of Surah Al-Baqarah, the entire Surah Al-Baqarah are Prophet linked to combating sihr. Falaq and Nas, right? All of these are especially powerful in combating sihr and continuous recitation. Uh, you don't need to go to a specialist, but it is advisable to for one simple reason. And that is that you are not knowledgeable of how to do these things. And it's better to go to a, a specialist to do that. And when you go to a specialist, make sure that the specialist you go to is of correct theology. Because most of the people involved in combating magic are themselves magicians. Not a minority. Most of them. In that when you go to them and you pay them the money, they will contact other jinns to kick the first jinns out. Now, what's the problem with that? The other one takes over. Never, ever, ever fight magic with magic because it'll only get you more magic, more sihr. How do you know that the guy you're going to is a magician? Very simple, very simple. What is he asking you to do and what is he demanding of you? Now, by the way, money is not a, a criterion because even righteous people might ask you money. What is an indication? What is he doing and what is he asking you to do? That's the indication. If he is doing something that is mumbo jumbo, bizarre, weird, superstitious, you know, telling you to sacrifice a chicken and take the blood. Okay. And this is very common, very common, right? Telling you to take a, I mean, anything that sounds, this is pagan. If he asks you for an item of clothing or hair or whatnot, if, and this is another sign, if he asks you for your mother's name or the mother's name of the one that you're treating, know that the person you're talking to is a magician. Look, you come to me and I'm treating Sihar. It doesn't matter to me what your father and mother's name is. How is that relevant to me? 
just like the doctor when you go to, your mother's name is not going to help the doctor cure you. Correct? So why do the jinns ask? Because in the world of the jinn, they need to know your mother's name. Because Allah says, call them by their fathers. And the shayateen want to disobey Allah. So they will call them by their mothers. So anyone who asks you, what is the name of the mother of the person? Anybody who without examining the patient, simply by knowing his mother's name, simply by getting some clothing item, says he's doing an analysis on this person. Know that this person is also contacting the jinn. Okay, so how do you know is legitimate? If he asks you to read more Quran, to pray often, to do dhikr, to give the adhan, to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to pray tahajjud, to follow the sunnah, in other words, standard stuff, then you know this person is legit. And that's the main criterion of separating the righteous from, from those who are not righteous. So to write the Quran, and it has to be Quran, and put it in water to drink, not a problem inshaAllah ta'ala, uh, to, uh, to blow the Quran onto something and give it to you. Again, if, you, if it's the Quran, not a problem as well. Uh, even to write Quran as long as it is Quran and put it on the body, but you have to read it, make sure it is entirely Quran. Otherwise, any time somebody gives you a paper or an item that has symbols, boxes and squares, weird garbage here and there, squiggles and lines and whatnot, right? Numbers. So you have grids with numbers is the most common. Anytime somebody's doing this, this person is not following the Quran and Sunnah. This is numerology and this is a method of communicating with the jinn. So don't be confused if there's one ayah or one name of Allah, just because it has Allah's name. SubhanAllah, even the mushrikun believed in Allah. Doesn't mean anything. All of it has to be Quranic or adhkar. Then we say it's permissible. But if there's weird stuff that you don't understand, languages you don't understand, scripts and symbol, you don't understand numbers, boxes, grids, all of this is communicating with the shayateen and it's not a part of our religion of Islam. And the more religious and righteous you are, the less the impact the sihr will have on you when it is done. But even the most righteous man or woman can be afflicted with sihr and the only cure to sihr is extra religiosity and turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the easiest way, which we did not get into at all, is to get to the item of sihr and to destroy it so that the effects of sihr are lifted up. But that's typically not the most common way because it's difficult to get to the item. But if you're able to, then this is the easiest way to do it. Otherwise, you don't need to get to the item because our Prophet was cured simply by Farah and Nas. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who are protected from sihr, uh, whom the shayateen do not harm. We ask Allah's protection, we seek Allah's protection from the evil of those who blow onto knots and from the evil of the jinn and the shayateen. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to always protect us and our families and our loved ones.